Welcome back to Learn As You Explore for another MBOT2 tutorial. In the last video, we implemented our first sensor combination project, where we used the ultrasonic sensor for obstacle avoidance and the quad RGB sensor for line following. We tested it on our robot and saw the robot react to obstacles as they were dynamically introduced during line following. In this video, we are going to add a third sensor. We're going to add color sensing. The quad RGB sensor can detect color in addition to detecting lines. Once again, you will experience the ease and beauty of reusing software. We will be reusing all of the code from our previous project, making this project simple yet powerful. We will test our program on the robot, watching it wait for obstacles and detecting and reacting to a specific color. Before we dive in, here's a quick way to support my work. If you're planning to get an MBOT2, you can use my Amazon affiliate link in the description. It won't cost you extra, but as an Amazon associate, I earn from qualifying purchases. Or if you just want to say thanks, there's a buy me a coffee link down in the description too. All right, let's jump in. Once again, we're going to be building on top of our obstacle avoidance during the line follow project. If you haven't watched that video yet, I highly recommend watching that tutorial before continuing with this one. I've added a link to the previous tutorial in the description. Let's first define the requirements for this project. Just as in the previous tutorial, we want the robot to continue following the line until it detects an obstacle within 10 centimeters and wait for the obstacle to be removed before continuing line follow. Along with that, I want the robot to detect green and when it does detect green, I wanted to make a 180 degree turn and then continue line following. This was the objective in our previous tutorial. Let's add our green color detection and reaction requirement to this. Now let's look at a new quad RGB sensor block that we'll use in this project. This block only cares about the L1 and R1 sensor values. The quad RGB sensor has four sensors L2, L1, R1, and R2, like we've seen previously. However, when the robot is following a line, any colors along the line will only be sensed by L1 and R1. So we don't need to consider the L2 and R2 sensor readings. So this block is perfect for that. The next option in this block is the dropdown for selecting what we want to detect. In this list, we see one of the options is the color green, which is what we need for this project. The final part of the block says status 0 to 3. This means that the block will give us a decimal value of 0 to 3 based on the combination of sensors that has detected the desired condition. In our case, we've chosen to detect green. Let's look into what this status value actually means. There are four main scenarios that we need to consider. The first scenario is when neither L1 nor R1 detects green. One such case is shown here. Since the block we're using only cares about L1 and R1, L2 and R2 values do not matter. We'll mark them with an X indicating don't care values. In this situation, both L1 and R1 would report a value of zero. Similar to our quad RGB sensor intro video, we'll treat the reported sensor values as binary and convert them to decimal. In this case, the resulting status decimal value is zero. In the next situation, the green color is slightly to the right of the sensor. So only R1 detects green while L1 does not. Again, converting this binary zero one value to decimal, we get a decimal value of one. Next, we have the case where L1 detects green, but R1 does not. This results in a status decimal value of 2. And finally, here is a case where the green part of the line is centered on the sensor. So both L1 and R1 detect it, resulting in a status decimal value of 3. Putting all of these cases together into one table, we get this. Now, our objective was to detect green. So in terms of L1 and R1, as long as at least one of the two sensors report green, we will consider that as green has been detected. 
when neither L1 nor R1 detect green, we'll consider that no green has been detected. This means that we're interested in the last three rows in the table. If we go back and take a look at our L1, R1 block, the decimal value is the same as the status value reported by the block. So any time a status value of greater than zero is reported, we have detected green. Otherwise, we have not detected green. Now let's refine our objective. Rather than saying if green color is detected, we will say if L1, R1 green status is greater than zero. Great, now that we have our objective defined, let's jump right into implementing this in our block program. First, make sure you're in ide.mblock.cc. Now let's open our advanced line follower with obstacle avoidance project that we saved previously by going to file, open, I've called it advanced line follower plus obstacle avoidance. Select OK and wait for the program to load. We don't want to change the previous project directly. So let's create a copy of this by going to file, save as, and give it a new name. I'm going to call it color plus advanced line follower plus obstacle avoidance and say OK. What we need to do now is to add the logic for the color detection and reaction part within the loop. We want the robot to detect the color green and make a 180 degree turn. Otherwise, it can continue line following while stopping for any obstacles. For this, we need another if then else block from the controls block category. Drag the if then else block to your workspace. Now let's add the condition for the if block. If the quad RGB sensors L1 R1's green detection status is greater than zero, we need to command a 180 degree turn. So we first need a greater than block from the operators category. Let's go to the quad RGB sensor category to get the quad RGB sensor L1 R1 status block and use that as our first operand for the greater than block. Instead of line, we want to detect the color green and the status we want is greater than zero. Let's insert this as our condition. When the reported status is greater than zero, we want the robot to perform a 180 degree turn. So let's head to the mbot 2 chassis category and use the turns left until done block. We want it to turn 180 degrees, so we will change that as well. Now, only in the case where we haven't detected green, we want the robot to do everything else, meaning line follow and obstacle avoidance. So let's drag the entire line follow and obstacle avoidance part of logic into the else block. Finally, we will insert this entire block that we've built into the repeat until loop. And we're done. Once again, it was relatively quick to add this amazing feature to our existing program. This is one of the most beautiful things about programming and software. Let's now upload this code to the robot and test it out. Make sure that the robot is powered on and is connected to your computer with the USB cable. If you're not sure how to do that, I'll add a link in the description to the exact timestamp from one of my previous videos where I show you how to do that. Once your robot is powered on and connected to your computer using the USB cable, click on Upload and then click on Serial. Select the USB serial device and click Connect. Great, your robot is now connected. Click on Upload Code, wait for the upload to complete. And great, your code has now been uploaded. You can now unplug the USB cable from the robot. Great, let's head on over to the robot and see our program in action. We have a similar setup as in our previous tutorial. The point to note here is the green square on the line follower sheet. That is where we can expect the robot to make a 180 degree turn. Let's start the robot it follows the line until it reaches the obstacle and waits for the obstacle to be removed. Once removed, the robot continues until it detects green and makes the 180 degree turn. Then the robot continues following the line. Once again, when dynamic obstacles are introduced, the robot stops and waits and continues after the obstacle is removed, making 180 degree turns when it detects green.
you've done amazing work. You've used three sensors in one program, the line sensor and color sensor, which are part of the quad RGB sensor module, and the distance measurements from the ultrasonic sensor. This is great work, and you should be proud of yourself. Share your success with your family and friends. If you found value in this video, hit the like button and subscribe to learn as you explore for more MBOT2 tutorials. Here are some of my other videos that you may find helpful. Happy programming, and I'll see you in the next one.